Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Gilmore here and Zuzu! Yes. Back to you again with another video right here on the Peter Gilmore YouTube Wrestling Channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Gilmore. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below. And friend me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. That's it. Alright, on this late Saturday night. January the 11th, 2020, or watching from somewhere else, it's January the 12th, 2020. Uh, first weekend of 2020, so we got there, thankfully, thankfully. So on this Saturday night, it is time for your late and out-of-date AEW Dynamite Review for January the 8th, 2020. First AEW, well, second AEW of the year. And, yeah. You know, AEW started on October 2nd. Really didn't have any, and, and it just started off with a bang. Bang. You know what I mean? And, um, the shows were good. Ratings were good. They, they fell off a couple of weeks with, you know, with NXT. And then they, they closed out the year with a, with a semi-good show. Then they come back Jan uh, last week with a great show at almost a million views, 170 something thousand I think it was. This week, ugh. I mean, there was a couple good matches, not mu not not that many, but I mean, the beginning match, the opening match was great with uh, Kenny and uh, Adam Page against the Private Party. That was pretty good. Then you had a really horrible women's match. And you had a segment with MJF and DDP. That's leading to a match this coming week. Um, at Bash at the Beach. Yet they still kept the title. Uh, so we got that from Miami next uh, this coming Wednesday night. Um, but other than that, the show kind of fell flat on its ass. And probably the, the worst show of AEW's long run, long couple month run. And but the ratings still were good. So they still all had almost a million views. I think they had nine hundred and six, nine hundred fifty thousand somewhere around there. I, I forgot the, the exact amount, so don't shoot the messenger. They they had over nine hundred thousand views. Go to NXT, which has 760,000 views. So AEW won another week, no, the second week in a row. They won in 2020. So I mean, they're doing something. They're doing good things, right? People are watching AE program, even though this week stunk. Next week, I don't know what's gonna happen with Bash at the Beach, and then uh, you know NXT is giving up a big show in two weeks. Uh. With the North American title being defended. Uh, I think the, the the finals of the Dusty Rhodes. Big dream, baby. Finals are going to be there. Or they're going to be... I think the finals are going to be at uh, NXT TakeOver Portland. I'm not sure. And, uh, you know, get the NXT title at TakeOver Portland. Which is probably going to be Ciampa and uh, Adam Cole, baby. We'll see what happens with that. Getting back to AEW. Like I said, it was a... Kind of a letdown show. And, uh, not, you know, ratings were high for it, even though it was a bad show. You know, it is what it is. What are you going to do? So, we start the show off with highlights from last week's show. So, if you missed it, you got, you got your highlights from that show. Then we have Memphis legend Dave Brown joining commentary. So, uh, Shivani takes a backseat. So that's always good, and, and is what it is. And then we start off the night with our first match, Kenny Omega and Adam Page taking on Private Party, Mark Queen and Isaiah Kennedy. This was a great match to open a, open a night. So AEW started off with a bang! A great match. You know, we have Adam Page, you know, last week he was drunken Adam Page. Now they're kind of doing this angle with him, like he... 
He's he's drunk all the time. I don't know how that's gonna play out, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, like I said, the match was great. It's also with Adam Page and Mark Queen locking up. Page works over the arm, works in some counters, and then the standoff. Then they lock up again. Page follows up with some chops, but Mark Queen counts it a drop kick, and then Isaiah Cassidy comes in with a double stomp, takes out Kenny. Follows up with chops on Page. They double team him. Page fights him off, tags in Kenny. And um, him and uh, Page double team Isaiah Cassidy. And they, all, they look like be on the same page, you know, the, the whole thing with Kenny and Paige, and Paige not wanting to be part of the elite, and not being on the cell page, and not come out and save them, and all that crap, we don't know what's going on with Adam Page, for the last month and a half, or well, last month or so. So, right now, they're looking on the same page, and uh, Kenny hits a backbreaker for a near fall, Adam Page comes in, hits a knee strike, and then Kenny comes back in, so they're really working on... Isaiah Ken Isaiah Ken Cassidy, excuse me, Isaiah, Isaiah Kennedy, that's another guy. Isaiah Cassidy for a while. Then uh Cassidy has a slingshot flatliner. And then gets a tag to Mark Queen, gets a high cost body a suicide dive, and then a couple of tope is um on the outside. Back in uh tags in Isaiah Cassidy, the double team. Uh, I believe it was Kenny. Some double teams and a Spanish fly a la Joel Maximo for a near fall. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy swing goes into a big boot by Adam Page. And then a fall away slam on Mark Queen. And then Kenny tags in. They double team Mark Queen for a little bit. Page hits a German. Then a power bomb. And then Kenny hits the V trigger for a near fall. And he almost breaks Mark Queen's neck with a snapdragon suplex. Uh, but Isaiah Cassidy cuts off Kenny. And uh, here's the silly string for a near fall. I don't know what that move is, but it is what it is. Uh, Mark Green uh, goes to hit a shooting star press. He missed. Ann Page gets run into, he's run into Kenny. Ooh. And then Ann Page lariats, uh, hits the lariat on Mark Green for another near fall. Kenny comes in, and then Cassie cuts off the Doomsday. And um, then they hit the Jitting Juice. The, the, the uh, Hurricane into a Diamond Cutter. They get a near fall to that. Page dumps Cassidy to the floor. Kenny then accidentally tosses Mark Keen into Page. But they battle back, and then Adam Page hits a buckshot lariat on Mark Keen, and then Adam, and then uh, Kenny puts him in the one-winged angel. Boom! Knocks him out. And they pick up the win. So Kenny and Adam Page pick up the win. Actually gave three and a half out of five stars. Good way to, op to open, open the night. The crowd was into it for the whole match. And that was awesome. So we get that. And then we go backstage. We see that bastard Pac. Now, Michael Naka, Naka, Nakazawa. And he wants his rematch with Kenny Omega for the third time. So, we'll see if Kenny gives him the match. I think they're going to have the match at Revolution on February the 29th. Or then again, they're going to have a special um, AEW where they have a lot of good matches. And that might be on the card. Or might be, yeah, might be even at this Wednesday. Who knows? So, uh, Pac and Kenny... Still going at it, and we get that, and that's that's pretty much all I got to say about that. All right, then we go to your uh, letdown of the night. We have the AEW Women's Championship. Um, the champion, little old Re little young Rio, whipper snapper Rio, excuse me, Rio, taking on the number one contender Chris Statlander. And we had uh. Shida and Britt Baker sitting next to each other at ringside. So that was nice. The number two and number three contenders. Uh, Brandy Rose joins commentary. I think she came out with Awesome Kong, uh, Melissa Cruz, and Melissa Cruz. We get that. And a match, I thought it could be better. This match was horrible. I'm sorry. I, th I thought it was going to be a great match between a young... A young champion in Rio and a star, no pun intended, with Chris Statlander. Uh, you know, they put they put on a decent match to start, but the ending was horrible. Horrible ending. Uh, starts off with with Rio attacking with strikes, and then Stat and then Statlander mows her down, covers for a near fall. 
She trips her up, trips Rio up, misses a leg drop, and then Rio hits a hurricane runner. Goes for the six one arm, is blocked, but Rio hits an arm drag, but then is cut off with a backbreaker for a near fall. And then it's, and Chris Statlander hits a slam for a near fall. Goes from goes from some ground and pound action. Rio fires back, hits some double knees that gets cut off as Statlander hits an electric chair drop, then an axe kick for a, for a near fall. Goes up top, look for the moonsault, she missed. And Rio comes back with Northern Knight suplex for a near fall. Then she goes up top, gets cut off, and Chris Statlander falls with a delayed superplex. And then right after that, Awesome Kong and, Mel and uh, Melissa Cruz come come out to the ring. You know what's going to happen here. Uh, Rio comes back, falls with a knee strike. Uh, Chris Statlander cut her off with the big boot. And then Rio gets pulled to the floor by, um, I believe it was Awesome Kong. And um, Melissa Cruz attacks her. And while this is going on, the referee's letting it go. Letting it go. I don't know what's going on. Let it go. And then uh, Statlander wipes, wipes her out with a dive. And she wipes out Awesome Kong as well. And Brandy has the ring, ringside. Then we see some that big... Remember that old dude that was in one of, one of um, Andy's vignettes? But we couldn't see who he is. We only saw his back of his bald head. Well, he comes out from under the ring, and it's Jericho's pal, Dr. Luther, who is, an, who is a deathmatch god back in uh, FMW and uh, B, uh, B, uh, uh, Big Japan Wrestling. B makes his debut and comes out. Then also Kong attacks Chris Statlander and uh, rolls it back in the ring. Rear then hits a high cross body on... He was about to hit it on... on um, on Chris Statlander, and then Brandy's like, "Go, go get her, Rio, go get her." So uh, she, she's like, "Fuck, fuck you guys." She hits, she hits the high cross body on Luther. Uh, then she goes for a double stomp on Chris Statlander, but she misses. But she cradles Statlander for a near fall. Pops it up with a crucifix bomb for a near fall. She misses a knee strike. Uh, Chris, hit, uh, Chris hits a lariat, and then the Big Bang Theory hits two. She goes for a move. Um, did a I think she was going for um, that stuff. I, I don't know what it is. It's like it's like ground zero that like Trent does. Goes for that move, and uh, did a ropes. Kong trips her up. Rio lands on her, and looks to like one, two, three. Rio retains the title. You know. I don't know what else to say there, but the the ending was kind of dull. I don't... Sorry, I had to the steam, but it is what it is. So it's the misses. So it is what it is. So yeah. The ending was kind of horrible, you know, with Kong, Melissa, Melissa Cruz, Brandy, and the, the you know, the added degree in Luther. It just looked bad. It, it was like a big clusterfuck of, of clusterfuckery. It was just bad. I'm sorry. And, you know. St I mean, the whole thing with, with the Nightmare Collective coming out and Trying, you know, at one point, you know, cheering on Chris Statler, and then the next thing, they're cheering on Guido. I don't know what was going on. Uh, you know, th this match didn't need them. You know, I mean, if it was after the match, not during the match, I would have been okay with it. But they did it during the match, which just pissed me off. So, yeah, I had a downgrade this freaking match from what I thought was going to be a, a decent match. I gave it two out of five stars, but you know, I'm downgrading it to one and a half out of five stars because of the fucking ending. It's horrible. You know, Joe Cronin went on a humongous rage rant, uh, you know, on, on, his, on his podcast, you know, saying that, that you know, AE Women's Division sucks right now. It does suck. I'm sorry. 
You know, Brandy's just like running the whole fucking shit. You know, Kenny's the booker. Kenny, you know, that Kenny. You know, he, he's putting his, his protege Rio in matches and she's really not been defending him. And then she writes on Twitter, going back to Japan. So we're not going to see Rio for another month. I, I don't know where the hell AEW is doing with their women's division. And, you know, when they, when they first came out with the, with the women's division, when Brandy was, was Allie, you know, with Baker and the like. And when he first started with double or nothing, and you had you know you had other people involved in the in the double or nothing uh at a royal and all that crap when he first started, and at all out I should say, and you know they were pe uh, you know the women were pegged to be the greatest r women's division ever you know better than the WWE better than NXT. Right now they look like shit. Allie's just doing nothing, except being with the Butcher and the Blade, which they don't, they barely, are rarely on TV, even though they were on this week. Um, Rick Baker is the number two or three contender. Kurashita's same boat. Chris Statlander is the number one contender, even though she got royally screwed by the Nightmare Collective. And then you have, you have Andy, this whole Nightmare Collective group of herself, Awesome Kong, who's collecting hair for some odd reason. Now, then you got Melissa Cruz, who we don't know anything about, other than she's a, uh, a, a, a just like a disciple to Brandy. And now you got Ed and Green and Dr. Luther, who I don't know what's going to happen with him. Maybe he's, like, he's like Brandy's psychiatrist or some shit. Like a, like a, almost like a vampiro type guy. It's a big thing on his head, and I don't know what the hell. He's creepy. I mean, his stuff in FM, FMW in, in, you know, Japan was fucking sick. I mean, looking at those matches are fucking just crazy. Go go look him up. Go look, go look up, uh, I don't know his full name. I think it's Luther something. Or Big Luther, I think it is. Something like that. Look him up on YouTube. You'll probably find his uh, matches. This crazy, insane Death matches in big, big Japan and all Japan and FMW. It's a fucking sick guy. But yeah, you know everybody's now giving AEW Women's Division, you know, a real good kick in the ass. And they they need a kick in the ass. I mean, how do you why do you end it with Brandy Rose and her her and her and her group? What what is the payoff here? I mean, they, they attack them, attack both women after the bell. And then uh, Hakura Shida and Britt Baker. Uh, well, actually, Hakura Shida makes a save as Britt Baker just, just stood, just sat there on her ass. And then we see Big Swole and Sunny Kiss arrive. So I don't know what's going to lead, what that's going to lead to, but maybe a. a Tag team match with a Kurushita and Rio against Awesome Kong and Melissa Cruz, or, or maybe Brandy gets gets her debut match on TV. We'll see, but the whole thing was a whole fucking sham. I'm sorry. I know I praise AEW a lot and I praise the women somewhat, but this was horrible. One and a half out of five stars. I hope they 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 do better next week or this coming week. Because right now, the way they're going. I don't know what's going to happen at uh, Revolution. And if they're going to take the title off Rio, let Chris Statlander take it off Rio. What, what should have happened on this past Wednesday? Have Chris Statlander win the belt. Did they do it? No. Probably going to have Chris Statlander win, and then Awesome Kong wins the belt and hands it over to Brandy. And Brandy wins it by default. Fucking okay, stupid. That's all I got to say about that. I'm not going to talk more about that. All right, then we got a Kip Sabian Penelope Ford video package. If you like that, I wasn't. I don't. I don't care. I'll get that. All right, then we get to our next match: Sammy Guevara, the Spanish God, taking on I see you, Christopher Daniels. Really a short match, five, almost six minute match. 
wasn't bad, but it, it was it was okay. You know, the whole storyline with Daniels can't getting he can't get a win. He's beside himself. He doesn't know what to do. And then you have people like Sammy Guevara and in the inner circle just yelling at him. You have, you have Pentagon and Faye Phoenix beat the crap out of him, almost broke his damn neck. You have that. Uh, but the match was decent. It's also with Dan uh, locking up. Daniels has a shoulder tackle, falls with arm drags. And then Sammy came back, taking him into the ropes, threw some strikes. Daniels with a hip toss, a slam, and then some chops. And then Sammy, Sammy hides behind the ref. And cheap shots Daniels, falls out with a flying double slump in the fall. And then he's dancing, he's strutting, he's doing his little thing. I don't know why that was needed, but it is what it is. He falls out with a spin kick, has up top, goes through on a 450 as Daniels hits an exploder. And Daniels goes to work. Uh, with a blue thunderbomb for a near fall. Uh, goes for Angel's Wing, gets countered, and then Sammy hits a knee strike and a sh standing shooting star press for a near fall. Then they trade pin attempts, working to um, uh, both men going down. Danielson gets up, hits an STO, but then Pentagon Jr. arrives, a man who has Zittle! Zittle! And dares him to do the Arabian Press. You know, that movie. He, he's on the top rope and he jumps on the bottom. He, that he botched it on the movie, botched. So he wants, to go, he wants him to go for that. And then Sammy attacks him from behind, hits a knee strike, and he wins the match with that. Okay. So the match was over. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. The finish was horrible. I don't know why that was needed, but it is what it is. Look at that. And after, after the match, the Dark Order come out. And Evil Uno is on the mic, puts over Daniels. He says the fans don't believe in him anymore. They think he lost a step, but uh, Uno thinks he can make him the man he once was again, like the Fallen Angel, the Prophet, you know, all that stuff. And he offers Daniels a Dark Order mask. Daniels is, is looking at it, as he can't know, you know, dark, you know, Evil Uno and the Dark Order. You know, Stu Grayson and the Beaver Boys were there. They, they want him to join, and then, and then Daniels looks at it, and then throws it at, at Evil Uno. Then he attack and kick the crap out of him. Then Angie Gazarian and Scorpio Sky come out to, for the save. The Young Bucks join in and make the save. They beat down Stu Grayson to clear the ring. And then, uh, Scorpio Sky follows it up with a toe pick on Hilo. Then they beat down Alex Reynolds and uh, a little bit. And then Daniels hits the best moonsault ever. So I don't know what this is leading to. Maybe Daniels. Turning on SCU and joining the Dark Order as the Exalted One. A lot of people saying that it could be him. It could be him or Marty. It could be anybody else right now. So, we'll see what happens with that. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that uh, this coming week on the program. So, I, I give all that two and a half out of five stars. And, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. And we will move on from there. Alright, then we get to our next match. Cody and Dustin teaming up. The Rose Brothers taking on the Lucha Brothers. Taking on Junior and Phoenix and Ray Phoenix. This was a good match. We had Art Anderson at ringside. And uh, we started with Pentagon Junior and Cody. Pentagon does his thing with the... Zero! Zero! Right in the face of Cody. Talk some shit. They tease, they tease each other's finisher, and then Phoenix tags in, Dustin joins him. They work with some counters, and then all four men are in. Phoenix attacks Cody from behind with a super kick, and Pentagon follows with a leg, with some leg kick. Cody fires back, tags in Dustin. Dustin is dumped as Ray Phoenix follows with a suicide dive. They go back in, Pentagon hits a top rope double stomp, follows him with some strikes and some chops. So they're working on Dustin for a while, and Pentagon's strutting around. Doing his thing. Then they continue to isolate Dustin. And Dustin keeps fighting back. To deliver some strikes. He dumps Ray Phoenix. And Phoenix gets a chair. On Anderson takes it away. As Dustin hits a Spain Buster. Tags, gets the hot tag to Cody. He goes for Mark. He runs, hits an avalanche on, on Pentagon. And then slaps them on Phoenix. Falls up with a dive to the outside. 
Hits some more counter strikes on Phoenix. Phoenix fights off crossroads. Hits a super kick. And then a rolling diamond cutter. Uh, tags into the Pentagon. They look for the MDK. Cody fights it off. And it's cut off with double teams. And then, and then uh, they, they hit the Pentagon driver on him. They work over Dustin, but he fires back. It's a, it's a uh, snap power slam and then a Canadian destroyer. And then Cody comes in with the Cody cutter, the Pentagon. And then Dustin hits the final reckoning for the win. So Cody and Dustin get the win. They're our second win as a tag team. I think second or third win as a tag team. But it was a pretty decent match. It gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. But, uh, you know, I don't know where they're going with the, with the, with the Lucha Brothers. They were, you know... They're pegged to win the tag team belts, you know, when the when the, when the uh, tag team tournament title tournament started. I was thinking them versus maybe the Dark Order. And my God, my cat just laid a turd. Holy shit! Exactly. Um. So yeah, if you hear me puking, you know, this is what it is. But I don't know where the Lucha Bros are going right now. I think they're the number two or three tag team right now. Oh, besides the Dark Order, I think it's number it went up to number one right now. Uh, you got the Bucks maybe at number two. Then you got I don't know you got Private Party somewhere in the mix. And then Pentagon, you know, you know Penny and Adam Page maybe in there. And then uh, you know you have uh, TH2, the Hybrid Hybrid Theory Two, or whatever they call themselves. Uh, but the Lucha Bros, where are they going? Are, are they getting into this thing with Daniels now? I don't know where it's going. Like, they're part of the Dark... I don't know, maybe they're part of the Dark Order. I don't know. I doubt that, but, you know, that would be really weird. But, uh... We'll see what happens with that. And, um, that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. So, I get the match 3... 3.25 out of 5 stars. Then, after it's Tony Shigavoni... Tony Schiavone interviews Cody about MJF's demands. On Anderson says MJF has no stroke and he doesn't like him. Uh, Cody says says he wants the match and he will answer next week. So we'll find out this Wednesday night at Bash at the Beach. What happens with uh, MJF and Cody. We'll see. And uh, exciting, but we'll see what happens. All right, after that, we get the genius, Lanny Poffold, the, the, I think, believe the brother of the Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah, dig it. Uh, he comes out to honor his father and his brother. Uh, and he spent the day with other legends and um, over AEW. Talks about more legend stuff. Uh, that's going to be on AEW Park this coming Tuesday, so if you want to watch that. And then watch NWA Power right after that. That's all I gotta say about that. Look we'll at that. So it's nice to see Lanny Poffo there. It's nice. That's it. It'd be nice to see Jerry Lawler, but you know what he's doing with WWE. I don't want to clash with AEW and all that other crap. So Vince didn't allow it. This way. All right. After that, we got MJF uh, arriving with Warlow. You know, tease the fans being the dick as usual. Uh. MJF calls Cody a coward who's afraid to face him. He gives him until the count of 10 to accept his demands and face him like a man. He doesn't come out. MJF calls him a little bitch. And then the man, Iron Dallas Page, bang! He comes out. MJF's like, Iron Dallas Page. You know, and uh, Page gets on the mic and says, if you told. If you told him 19 years ago he'd be on TNT live again, and with AEW would have thought you were smoking crack. But he's here to address the issues with MJF from a few weeks back. Uh, I don't remember that what that was. But uh, he mocks, he mocks him and Ward Blow. He hypes his social media. Teases coming back for one more match, which I would love to see. But well, he's kind of he's 60 something years old and. Uh, you know, that DDP yoga is working for him, but, you know, most people don't want to see a 60-year-old guy in the ring. Ric Flair! Um, I think I'm 70 now, but I see Ric Flair in the ring anymore. Never know, never know, 
I just go, in the 70s, still going, still going, still going in matches. You know, you had Terry Funk. That's still in his 80s. 82, 83 years old and having one-off matches. Even freaking guy's insane. Is he going to wrestle when he's 90 in a wheelchair? I was a hardcore legend back in Japan. Japan, number one. Get that right, Terry. Bang! Cactus! Cactus! Where are you, Cactus? Terry! Terry, would you like a Dorito? Sorry. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. He hypes that up. And then MJF says, even in his pr even, even in DDP's prime, he couldn't lace his boots. And right now, he couldn't even hold his jock. His micro penis of a jock, that is. Uh, and then the butcher and the blade and the bunny arrive. Uh, then MJF reminds him that WCW is dead, like the average age of his fans. And then he gives DDP two options. Uh, in option one, he can kiss the ring and leave. Or they can send him to the hospital. Then MJF says he's going to lay down with one of Diamond Dallas Page's daughters and bang, and then Page gets, and then DDP gets all pissed off, punches him in the mouth. It's a diamond cutter on the butcher. He floats over and hits one for the blade. And then, uh, I think he was going after, uh, Allie. And, uh, MJF hits a low blow right in the nuts. It looked like they were going to do more damage to DDP. Then QT, Marshall, and Dustin come out to make the save. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. I think it might be QT, Marshall, Dustin. And, uh, and uh, I don't know, who was it? And DDP in a six-man tag team match this week against the Butcher and the Blade and maybe Wardlow. Or uh, maybe MJF gets in, the, in, gets in his first... Uh, TV match in a, in a long time. Well, besides the uh, the battle, the the Diamond Ring Battle Royal on the match with Adam Page, so it's really his third match TV. But it was we'll see what happens. But it was a good segment. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. And um, you know more story on progression with Cody and and MJF. Nice to see Diamond Dallas Page. Looks to be in some decent shape. And we'll see what happens. Maybe he fights at Bash the Beach this week. Probably take the pin, but uh, we'll see what happens. You know, it's probably just gonna be a one off match, and uh, that'll be it. He'll go back to doing his DDP yoga and your mama's yoga, but and that'll be it. That's, let's see what happens. All right, then we go back to the ring with our next match a tag team match, uh, Jurassic Express. All right, we had Jungle Boy, and I believe it was. Luchasaurus, I believe. Marco was at Marco Stump was at ringside. Uh, taking on the best friends Chucky T and Trent. Decent match. Uh, starts with Chuck and Jungle Boy locking up. They do some counters. They lock up again. Chuck follows some arm drags. Jungle Boy hits a springboard arm drag and a drop kick. Uh, Marco Stump was was um in there was um, Luchasaurus at ringside. I should say. Uh, so we get Trent and Marco Stump tagging. Trent shoves him down. Takes him to the ropes. Marco hits a hurricane Rana, but Trent cuts him off. But Marco cuts him up for two. Uh, Jungle Boy comes in. They work over uh, Trent for a little bit. Uh, they do some double teams. Chuck has to make the save, and then it always breaks down. They all face off. As we go to break, we come back. Uh, Chucky, uh, Ch uh, Chuck Taylor comes back with a Falcon Arrow for a near fall. And Jungle Boy hits a desperation clothesline. Luchasaurus tags in. I guess it was three on two. Uh, we had Orange Cassidy in there as well. So, yeah, got that. He runs wild. Uh, falls with some, with some kicks. And then Orange Cassidy tags in. His hands in his pockets. There's those devastating kicks of doom. Then he hits a, hits a, uh, a diamond, uh, excuse me, a st uh, stunner. Also with some drop kicks and a suicide dive on the, all three men. Then they have a big group hug. And then Joe Boy attacks with a German and is cut off with a spear. Orange Cassidy hits a falling top rope splash for a near fall. Uh, Marco makes the save. Marco hits a flatliner on Chucky T. It's a destroyer. And then Luchasaurus tosses him onto the pile. 
And then Chuck cuts off Jungle Boy, but Jungle Boy hits a Hurricane, Hur a Hurricane with a Cradle for the win. So Jurassic Express pick up the win. Match was okay, gave it two and a half out of five stars. So they're really kind of pushing Jurassic Express uh, to a possible tag team title match. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. We move on. All right, next we got Bash of the Back, 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 Bash of the Beach. Uh, we have Pac taking on Darby Allen one on one. Uh, we also have DDP, QT Marshall, and Dustin taking on MJF the Butch and the Butcher and the Blade. So DDP gets his uh, final match, I guess, and MJF gets some TV time on in a match. And then we have Hikaru Shida and Chris Statlander taking on Awesome Kong and, M and Melissa Cruz, Randy and Doctor Luther at ringside, I assume. We'll see what happens with with those with those uh, ladies. You know, you got Rio, Rio probably in, in Japan doing stuff, rant, uh, stardom or whatever she's doing. Besides me, um, and you know, you have Brandy at ringside. What's gonna happen with the Nightmare Collective? What's gonna happen with Chris Statlander and the Nightmare and um the Nightmare Collective? She's been at you know she wants to get her revenge. Yakuza Shida wants to get in on the, on the act. So we'll see what happens with that. And uh that's pretty much it for that. Alright, then we have the big one, John Moxley's big decision. Is he gonna join the inner circle and be with Chris Jericho? So uh Jericho comes out, show up his win as Hiroshi Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom 14. He, he rides with Sammy and uh Jake Hager. And then Moxley comes out to the crowd. Jericho has some little bit of the bubbly. Uh, ready in the ring. Jericho calls Moxley his friend and his protege. He says, Elvis is a jackass, and if he was here right now, he'd kick his ass. Okay. And then the Beatles are way better. I don't know about that, but... Uh, he says, Mox will, will give his answer. The car is all gassed up. The, the Ford GT. Uh, Santana and Ortiz are ready to party all night long. Where have they been, by the way? You know, we haven't seen Santana and Ortiz in, like... Since last year. But it is what it is. And, um, and, um, if they're ready to party, none of us are invited, which sucks. And then he asks Mox if he wants to join the inner circle. Mox says he's had a lot to think about this week and a lot went into this decision. You may think you know him, including Jericho. He doesn't, he doesn't want what Jericho offered him. Can't be bought. Came to dominate, and his answer is yes. So he joins the inner circle. Everybody's going nuts. They're like, no! And Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and Jim Ross are beside themselves. Like, what is he doing? So he he takes he takes his shirt, his jacket off, has an inner circle uh, mock shirt on. He says he came to dominate, and no one is more dangerous than the inner circle, and he will stand with them. Uh, Jericho says he told he told us so. Fox will learn from the greats like Jer like himself. He will stand with him, and they will dominate AEW for years to come. So, uh, once the bubbly, they look to celebrate, and they spray the bubbly all over themselves. Jericho then says he will take over. They will take over AEW. Mox says Jericho owes him a car. He's like, you know, you owe me the keys. So Jericho gives him the keys. Mox gets, gets a You Sold Out chant. Uh, then Jericho says Mox sold out every night as Inner Circle means money. They won at the Tokyo Dome and they're going to drink some more. And then Moxley says, Oh uh, yeah, I forgot one thing there, J Chris. I was just kidding. I don't want to join the Inner Circle. All I want is your title. So then he breaks a bottle of the bubbly right over Chris Jericho's head. Hits the, hits the, the Death Rider. The death rate or whatever it's called. The 30 Ds don't go cheap. And then he power drives Sammy into well, it doesn't power drive him. He like kind of hit the uh the death rider into the mat. Sammy just sold it very well. That was sick. And then Jake Hager tries to get involved and uh Fox runs out through the crowd and um uh, he with the keys. He goes up the ramp and holds up the keys like I got the keys, bitch! So yeah, Jericho is completely knocked out. He doesn't like, what the hell's going on here? So yeah, it's setting up Jericho Moxley at Revolution. Like I said, winning. 
So, yeah, you should believe me all the time. So, yeah, so, Moxley gets one over on Jericho. I expect Jericho to get get revenge uh, this coming week at Bash the Beach or at the Jericho Cruise, which is week after, so they're going to have that. The Jericho Cruise is happening next week. Um, not next week, the following week. Uh, so we're going to get the matches on um 21st. Oh, the 22nd, I should say. I think the matches are the 20th and 21st. Um, on the Jericho crew, so we'll see what happens with that. It should be nice. Uh, first time ever wrestling on a boat uh, on TV, you should say. So we'll see what happens with that. And uh, that was pretty much all all there was for AEW Dynamite uh, this past Wednesday night. And uh, yeah, so. AEW, I gave a 6 out of 10. I was going to give it a little bit higher, maybe 6.25. But that's just me. So I'm going to round it off to 6 out of 10 stars. It was really a letdown show. The women's match was horrible. The MJF segment with DDP was okay. Uh, there was a couple... The, the opening match was awesome. Uh, Best Friends and Jurassic Express was okay. Uh... Then, you know, you had a couple other matches. You know, Daniels and Sammy Guevara was decent. You know, teasing Daniels, maybe going to the Dark Order as the Exalted One. But we'll see. Uh, and then, that was basically it. Pac, you know, going running amok, seeing, trying to get his rematch with Kenny Omega. Adam Page, drinking with the fans. After his match with, with, with Private Party. See what happens with that. But hopefully next week is better than this week. Because this week was a letdown. But like I said, they still got the ratings. They won the ratings war again. With 943,000 views, I think they had. I forget the number. They beat uh, NXT by, by about 200,000 views. Not, not a big win, but a huge win. But they did pretty well. And NXT got 700. 50,000 views somewhere around there. Let's see what happens uh, next week on the show, on both shows. And that's all I got to say about that. So, if you have any wrestling questions, put it down below in the comment section of this video or any one of my future videos coming up. Or hit me up via Twitter at my Twitter link. Link is down below in the description box. So, click it. Follow me on Twitter with, um, with all my. I, I really don't. Don't, I don't usually do a lot of stuff on Twitter. You know. I'm, I'm always on Twitter, but I don't, I don't tweet that much. Of course, I don't really like Twitter that much anyway. Um, it is what it is. I got a lot of uh, friends on on, uh, on uh, Twitter and a lot of wrestlers follow me. Taylor Hendricks and uh, uh, some of the guys from WW do... Uh, W. Mick Foley actually retweeted me once. Uh, Kenny Omega is following me. A lot of people. A lot of people following me. But uh, it is what it is. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, Kelly Klein actually uh, is uh, follows me. Big up to Kelly. My sweetheart. But um, not like that. I wish, but not like that. You know, she broke up with BJ Whitmer. She cheated on him. Oh boy, that that had a that's bad. I don't know who she cheated with, but I don't want to know. It wasn't with me. We well, should have been, but it's with enough about that. Anyway, she probably she's gonna look at this video like, what is he talking about? A creepy kid. But I digress. So yeah, so I get a lot of followers for Twitter. So keep following me uh, on Twitter. Leave your questions in my my, my DM box. Me up with your DMs. I'll slide into your DMs as well. And uh, you can also tweet me your questions. You can also send, send your questions down below. Hit me up via Facebook. We'll talk and we'll have a nice little discussion and hopefully we'll get to a QA sooner or later. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so that's it. So that's it for my video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to try to get my NXT video up uh, before I go to bed. 
one thirty now in the morning, and I'm getting this video done because I got a lot of videos to make uh, between now and Monday. Got my uh, NXT review coming up a little bit. Uh, SmackDown coming up tomorrow. Uh, I got a video about Neil Peart, uh, the drummer for Rush. I'm gonna do a tribute video for him. Uh, I might talk about the Tessa Blanchard situation tomorrow on my rant channel. Talk about it briefly. I'm not gonna talk about it a lot. Um, and then, uh, uh, probably Monday night. I'll, I'll probably Monday before Raw, whatever time that'll be. I don't know when is my, the video is gonna be. I'll talk about TNA Hard to Kill, which is tomorrow night. Let's see if Tessa Blanchard gets the belt after what's happening right now. I doubt she's going to do it now. I doubt TNA will give her the belt. She's in big trouble with TNA. Uh, she'd probably be in the doghouse now with whatever Scott Demore and Don Callis uh, going to do with the situation now. Probably yell at, yell at Tessa saying it was unprofessional. And Tessa might come out and tweet, I'm sorry. I don't know. But she said what she said and she did what she did. I'm a hypocrite trying to get all the women's support. So, uh, yeah. So we see that. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. NXT review coming up in a little bit. Watch my watch my raw review down below in the comment and the uh there in the description box. I'll get it out of my mouth. That's what she said. Uh that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great rest of uh, have a great rest of your weekend. And uh that's it. And uh go Packers or and I'll beat the Seacocks so that Aaron Rodgers can lose twice to the 49ers at, in San Francisco. So all I just need is one more win to go to the Super Bowl, baby. One more win next Sunday. Next Sunday night. It's going to be big. It's going to be a good game. Hopefully the, the Packers win. Hopefully. Let's all pray for the Packers to beat the Seacocks next, uh, tomorrow night. We shall see. I really don't want to play the Seahawks at home, at home again. I have to beat them a third time. That's gonna be, you know, another close game if the Seahawks face us. That's all I gotta say about that. But if we play the Packers, it'll probably be a close game as well. But I think, you know, we got the defense is going clicking on all cylinders. Jimmy G, we you know had a bad game. Uh. The defense came out strong. I think Richard Sherman had a pick six. Oh, they, you know, they kicked some ass today, and it was great. That's all I gotta say. One win away. That's all I guess I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a Super Bowl so I can go to my my brother from another mother's house, enjoy the game, and watch them. Hopefully, beat whoever's gonna be. The, it's gonna be Houston, or it's gonna be Kansas City, or maybe the Titans. Titans, go Titans today. Yes. Expose those Ravens. Sorry, Otaku. I'm sorry. I told you before, team is nothing. You're overrated. Your quarterback is overrated, and he got exposed today. So eat that. That's all I got to say about that. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I'm out. Peace. Sons of bitches.